Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and if you have the limited budget and you still want to have a long range radio and you really do have a limited budget, your options are not that well wide because you can try to get Radio Master, you can get something from the free sky, but if you really would like to fit below $150 and still be able to fly for 10 or 20 kilometers, um, this is something you might find in the internet. It's the C. We already covered the C FM30 some time ago. This is C F. T24 2.4 gigahertz long range LoRa radio which can work with the FR receivers uh, those big ones and the small ones but this is not about the receivers at all today we will just try to open the FT24 and see how it's built inside what's up with that and how's the build quality of this particular radio which I got from Andrew Newton. Thank you Andrew very 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 much. Let's begin with the basics. Uh, it's plastic. It's plastic and you can feel it. Uh, feels maybe not cheapish um, but it doesn't really feel in your hands like the high quality plastics but the the whole build is very 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 stiff i will have to say it's not squeaking it's not making strange sounds when forced and it's not uh, bending at all which kind of is a good starter because some radios are squeaking from the beginning, this one is not. So feels kinda kinda okayish in your hands. And the gimbals, uh, gimbals are but the strings are not that the springs are not that bad and the smoothness is not that bad. However, the whole gimbal mechanism over here is plastic, only the ends gimbal ends are aluminium and yeah you can unscrew them to adjust the length and the switches switches are switchery and uh, oh the pots mm, the pots do not feel right although the good thing they do have very noticeable detent in the in the in the middle and they move kind of with hmm actually they are not that bad no i have to change my opinion on the pots because the pots are actually pretty nice. And we have the LCD, some buttons, trims, six trims, so you can trim the pots as well. And on the back, on the back, there is a standard JR Bay to install the external module, metal carrying handle and the battery compartment, which is interesting in the battery compartment because it has space for three 18650 lithium cells however only two of them have springs and the contacts electrical contacts so you install the batteries only on the outside i don't understand here we have what's over here hmm, some kind of the connector something looks like the trainer port i really do wonder what's this connector for i will have to take a look at the instruction manual and over here we have micro USB and here SD card and SIM. But ta dam ta dam, uh, there is no SD card, that's fine. And there is even no hole for the SIM card. So, yeah, okay. Now let's just take a screwdriver, let's protect the gimbals and let's see what's happening inside of the radio. There are four screws holding the back plate together and it actually comes out without any problem and inside we have two wires. We have the connector for something so let me this connect this thing and we have the flat wire for the extension board so let me quickly disconnect this flat ribbon cable i hate those flat ribbon cables they really 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 okay so this one is disconnected let's take a look at the back side first so here this part is basically i think only for the connector for the trainer port over here and the stretch connector i have no idea what it's doing yet 
and here for the contacts for the external JR Bay and this is covered with hmm, the plaster. Interesting. I wonder what's the purpose of the plaster. Is it to make it slightly sturdier or or what? Or to only act as an insulation? No idea yet. Still, it's a nice touch. That means that somebody cared enough to put some kind of the extra insulation on this part and this is actually good. And here, oh, I missed something. This is for the connector for the external battery pack. So you can also plug the battery pack over here and you do not have to use the 18650 to power this thing which is nice, but it looks like there is no balancing. There is, and I'm not sure you can feel it, you can see it. It's only plus and the minus and the middle battery is not connected. And seems like this thing is designed to work on 2S. Okay, makes sense. Still, I wonder why the th three places for the, for the LiPo. Hm, interesting. And now let's take a look at the radio internals itself. Well, uh, there's a lot of PCB over here. Let's begin with the gimbals. The gimbals, like I said, they feel plasticish, but however, I have to be honest that the build quality of the gimbals is quite nice. The molds are in pretty good shape, at least were in the pretty good shape when this thing was molded. We have a way to adjust the tension. Uh, yes, there are tensioning spring, at least one over here, which is for the roll and where's... Okay, this is a throttle. And this is the tensioning spring for the pitch. So, in total, not that bad. The soldering, for example, over here, um, not the best soldering ever, but however, not that bad as well. And... Uh, Honestly, I have to say that those gimbals are probably made better than they feel uh, on the outside because I'm really kind of impressed with how nice the molds were when the plastic was was used to make those plastic elements. So that's that's kind of nice and the throttle, yeah, and of course here we have the adjustment for the ratchet. What also struck me is that well, this is, of course, uh, STM32 F103, so kind of rather smallish uh, CPU, MCU, uh, almost the same speed as the Nazi32, right? And here, okay, this one. This is the radio chipset. This is the radio chipset, the radio part that C is using, and uh, this is the what I said during my video about FM30 transmitter. This is the Semtech SX1280 or 1281, but they differ only in the minor details, so this, not, this is not really relevant. And this looks like exactly the same board that is soldered inside of the FM30. It's just placed over here in the PCB and there is a longish uh, antenna wire pigtail that goes directly into the, the antenna. Well, that's I think this is one piece. So this is on one hand good because there is no connector, there are no losses on the signal for the connector. On the other hand, the wire is kind of longish and probably it has some attenuation, but probably also not that much. Also, look, the Apex over here is nicely covered with the Celastic. Also, there is Celastic here to help the organize the wires so they are not wobbling around and also keep everything nicely in place. The same on this side. Here also secured nicely with the Celastic white gooey thingy. Um, I really wish that there was some kind of the shielding on the radio part. That really would be awesome if somebody could pull the shielding on this, but they are not doing any shielding. Who am I to say it's necessary? And also look, there is also the second antenna connector over here, but it's not used. That means that this, this chip over here, which act, let me zoom, maybe we can, we'll be able to see it in details. This is the radio chipset. Uh, this is power amplifier slash antenna switcher, but they removed markings, so there is no simple way to know what it really does. 
and two antenna circuits and only this one antenna is routed. That means that probably if you flash this with a different firmware, it can also take usage on the second antenna, but clearly they disable this, this functionality on this radio. I'm also interested to what exactly is this micro USB connector over here. It's located over here, so I wonder if it's used to communicate with the main CPU over here or the radio part. Hmm, hard to tell. Will we be removing the PCBs today? I don't feel like removing the PCBs. Maybe someday we will do the a detailed video about everything inside but I do have to say that there is really a lot a lot of the PCB uh, like for example here the all the switches and all the pots on the top section are located on the one of the PCB and I'm not sure I like it because probably if you will break one of the switches or destroy one of the pots uh, it will be kind of complicated to replace only this part because you will have to remove this whole board and solder the switch or this and there is really a lot of solder over here so it will be rather a complicated process without the hot air station um, but it was done probably to lower the price. You do not have to have separate wires for everything and it's just simplifying the process. You just put this thing on the PCB and put it inside. Also here, hmm, this part over here, I don't get it. Pretty huge PCB and I, by huge I really do mean huge PCB that basically suits only the speaker and the power button. Hmm. This PCB over here, which seems to be used only to hold the trim switches. Probably, oh, okay, I get it. Mm, they done it exactly the same thing with the top switches and the trim switches. They just place them on the PCB to simplify the manufacturing and then the whole module just goes into the, the slots in the, in the front section. And then we have the main PCB over here. In general, it looks kind of nice-ish. Uh, there is nothing wrong I can say about the quality of the PCB. I wish that the ribbon wires uh, were not used and something else was in place. But besides that, the build quality looks kind of okay-ish. If not, this one wire, this flat ribbon cable over here. See, uh, the radio was almost not used, but because of some kind of the decision during the making process, they had to flip it 180 degrees. So it's brand new, but it's almost already broken in half because it twisted so tight. Um, I'm not really even sure that... It contacts nicely over there. Hmm, interesting, interesting, interesting. I wish, for example, this wire was like slightly longer to lower the stress. Overall, overall, the build quality is okay. If not this detail and if this wire, this ribbon cable dies, probably you lose the bottom section of the trims. Oh, this one also goes out. Interesting. Okay. And... Uh, at least here they took the effort to put the elastic. Overall, I would have to say that for the radio that is exactly 99 bucks, the build quality of the functionalities are at least on the first glance very interesting. I also read somewhere that this thing should have a Wi-Fi. Uh, not the Wi-Fi, the FPV, but where it? No, the bubble concentrate, Bluetooth. Yes, here's the Bluetooth mark. But where is the Bluetooth installed on this thing? Hmm. Maybe on the bottom side of this. Yeah, probably on the bottom side of this one. So maybe we should, after all, remove the main PCB just to take a look at what's happening on the on the other side. Okay, 
Right. So yeah, uh, LCD view. And uh, nope, there is no Bluetooth module anywhere I can see. At least not on the main PCB. Maybe there is a Bluetooth somewhere else. Maybe somewhere here. Really hard to tell, but I do not really see anywhere the Bluetooth antenna on this thing. So interesting, interesting. Maybe there really is no Bluetooth. Hmm. Hard to tell. Anyhow, like I was saying, overall for the price, I think the build quality is at least okay. -ish. So probably it's not really the cheapest radio to make. And uh, because the link that uh, CE is using is actually a pretty nice radio link and has some interesting features. If you are willing to experiment with completely unknown red to you radio system with those huge receivers I showed you in the beginning, and that might be not that bad option. And they say that 15 kilometers. So it has to be true. If they say that 15 kilometers, then it has to be true because it's written on the on the front of the radio. So so far, so far so good. I really look I'm really looking forward to checking how what's the practical range and practical features of this radio because i have not tested that yet the weather is unflyable right now and uh, i will let you as soon as i will know for now for now it's all for today thank you very much for watching and until the next one bye bye